Are you struggling to understand Yolofi 10 architecture? Though you have already read the paper. Deeply understanding YOLO architecture by only reading the paper, unfortunately, is not enough. You also need to go to the architecture file and read the source code. But don't worry, we have done it for you. We have read the paper carefully, draw the YOLO V10 architecture side by side with its architecture file, and dive very deep into the source code to fully understand how the YOLO V10 architecture really works. So, let's get into it. Beforehand, click the subscribe button to get updates on YOLO and computer vision applications. Before explaining the whole YOLO V10 architecture, I will explain details of YOLO V10 blocks so that you can understand more easily. The most commonly used block is the convolutional block. This block is based on conf class in the conf.py file. The file is in the Ultralytics and in modules folder. A convolutional block consists of a 2D convolutional layer, a 2D batch normalization, and activation function. In YOLO V10, default activation function is silo. They are all fused together into a single convolutional block. In YOLO V10, there is an auto pad code or auto padding. This code is used to determine the padding value if it is not defined or none when using a convolution block. To determine the padding value, use the following formula. The kernel value is divided by 2 using the floor division operator. By using this operator, the results will be rounded to the nearest integer. For example, there is a convolution block with kernel size 3, stripe 2, and does not define a padding value. Then the padding value is 1. Another example, there is a convolution block with kernel size 1, stride 1, and does not define a padding value. Then the padding value is 0. Next, the C2OF block. This block is based on C2OF class in the block.py file. The file is in the Ultralytics and in modules folder. The C2OF block consists of several blocks. Two convolutional blocks and several bottleneck blocks. The output from the first count block will be split. One of the split results will be connected to the several bottleneck blocks. The number of bottlenecks in this C2OF block is determined by n. The output of the split convolutional block will be combined with all the output of the bottleneck block using concat. After that, it will be connected to a convolutional block with kernel size 1, stride 1. In the C2OF block there is a bottleneck block. Here is the explanation. This block is based on bottleneck class in the block.py file. There are two kinds of bottlenecks, the one that uses shortcut and the one that doesn't. If a shortcut is used, the bottleneck is made up of two parallel lines, the main line and the skip connection line. The main line is made up of two convolutional blocks with kernel sizes 3 and stride 1. Meanwhile, the skip connection line passes input directly to output without any alteration. The results of these two pathways are added using element-wise addition. If no shortcut is used, the bottleneck consists of only two count blocks with kernel sizes of 3 and stride 1. The plus operator in PyTorch is used for element-wise addition between two tensors that have the same size. When two tensors are added, each element in the first tensor will be added to the corresponding element of the second tensor. In this example, both tensors have the same form of 2 by 3, so we can perform element-wise addition between them. Each element of the first tensor is added to the corresponding element of the second tensor, producing a new tensor with the sum result. Next, the C2OFCIB block. This block is based on C2OFCIB class in the block.py file. This block is a derivative of C2OF block. The difference is, in C2OFCIB uses several CIB blocks rather than bottleneck blocks. Besides that, C2OFCIB also has an additional parameter, LK. The parameter determines the use of large kernel convolution. The following is a CIB block. This block is based on CIB class in the block.py file. Like bottleneck blocks, there are also CIB blocks that use shortcut and the one that doesn't. If the shortcut is not used, there is a collection of blocks in the following order. Depth-wise convolutional block with kernel size 3 and stride 1. Convolutional block with kernel size 1 and stride 1. Depth-wise convolutional block. Convolutional block. And finally, depth-wise convolutional block. 
If a shortcut is used, the block collection is the main line. Then there is the skip connection line. In addition, if the LK is true, then there is a difference in the third block, becoming RepVC CDW. Here is the RepVC CDW block. This block is based on the RepVC CDW class in the block.py file. This block has two depth wise convolutional blocks, element wise addition, and silo activation function. In this block, the input goes through two depth wise convolutional blocks. In the first block, the kernel size is 7, stride 1, and padding 3. While in the second block, the kernel size is 3, stride 1, and padding 1. The results of the two depth-wise convolutional blocks will be added together. After that, the silo activation function will be applied. Depth-wise convolution In depth-wise convolution, each input channel is only processed by one kernel which produces one output channel. In this example, there are three channels, so there will be three kernels, one for each channel. Each kernel is only applied to one input channel. This is used to reduce the number of convolution operations that must be performed, thereby reducing computation and execution time. Next, the scdown block. This block is based on scdown class in the block.py file. This block combines two consecutive convolution operations to perform downsampling or reduce resolution on the feature map. Convolution block with kernel 1 and stride 1 is used to change the number of channels without changing the spatial resolution. Depth-wise convolution block with kernel 3 and stride 2 used to perform downsampling. In addition, this convolution also reduces the computational burden by only applying the kernel to each channel separately. The next block is the SPPF or Spatial Pyramid Pooling Fast. It is a modification of SPP or Spatial Pyramid Pooling. The main function of the SPPF is to generate a fixed feature representation of objects of various sizes in an image without resizing the image or introducing spatial information loss. This block is based on SPPF class in the block.py file. Inside SPPF, there are several blocks and layers. First, a count block with the kernel size 1 and stride 1. Then followed by three layers of max pooling with the kernel size according to the k value in the SPPF block. The output of the count block and three layers of max pooling will be combined using concat. After that, it will be connected to a count block with kernel size 1 and stride 1. The next block is PSA block or partial self-attention. Self-attention is a technique used to perform global modeling. Global modeling in the context of object detection is used to understand the relationships between pixels or between distant features by considering the entire image. YOLO V10 uses partial self-attention. TSA divides a feature into two parts, then processes only part of the feature using self-attention. This block is based on PSA class in the block.py file. In this block, there is a convolution block with kernel size 1 and stride 1. The output of this block will be split into two. One of the split results will be connected to the attention block. There is also a shortcut here. After that, connect to FFN or feed forward network. In this FFN, there are two convolution blocks with kernel size 1 and stride 1. There is also a shortcut here. The output of the split convolutional block will be combined with the output of this block using concat. After that, it will be connected to a count block with kernel size 1 and stride 1. The next block is V10 Detect. This block is the head of the YOLO V10 architecture. There are three V10 Detect blocks to detect small, medium, and large objects. This block is divided into two parts. This part is used to generate class probabilities for each object in the image. In this part, there is depth-wise convolution with kernel size 3 and stride 1. Convolution block with kernel size 1 and stride 1. Depth-wise convolution. Convolution block. And convolution layer with kernel size 1, stride 1, and padding 0. This part is used to generate bounding box coordinate predictions. This part consists of two count blocks with kernel size 3 and stride 1. 
Then there is a convolution layer with kernel size 1, stride 1, and padding 0. You have learned every YOLO V10 components in detail. Now I will explain the overall YOLO V10 architecture. The YOLO V10 architecture. In general, the YOLO architecture is divided into three parts. There are the backbone, neck, and head. Backbone is the deep learning architecture that basically acts as a feature extractor. The neck combines the features acquired from the various layers of the backbone model. The head predicts the classes and bonding box regions, which is the final output produced by the object detection model. Next, I will explain the whole YOLO V10 architecture. This architecture drawing is based on YOLO V10 architecture file, which is located in Autolytics CFG Models V10 folder. There are several files which show variants of YOLO V10. To determine the YOLO V10 variant, there are three parameters. These parameters are depth multiple with multiple and max channels. The depth multiple parameter determine how many bottleneck blocks in C2F block and CIB block in C2F CIB block. The width multiple and max channels parameters determine the output channel. For example, the parameter values for L variant are depth multiple 1 with multiple 1 and max channels 512. So, in the architecture file is written like this. In addition to the three parameter values, each variant has a different use of the C12 FCIB block. In the N variant, it is only used on block number 22. In the S variant, on blocks number 8 and 22. In N and S variants, use large kernel convolution, therefore LK equals true. In M to X variants, C12 FCIB is used on the following block numbers and does not use large kernel convolution. In this video, I will only explain the overall architecture of YOLO V10L. Block numbering in the architecture based on the architecture file. Numbering starts from the backbone section and starts from zero. For example, this convolutional block is the first block in the architecture, so we assign it the number zero. And we draw the block as shown on the screen. Next, this convolutional block is the second block. So, we assign it the number one. Then, there is the p-value. t is the notation adopted from efficient depth, which represents the feature level. For the C2F block, we give number 2. And so on. The YOLO V10 input is an image with three channels. Next, the backbone. This backbone is made up of numerous convolution layers that extract distinct features at various resolution levels. This backbone begins with two convolutional blocks with kernel size 3 and stride size 2. The spatial resolution of the output is reduced when stride 2 is used. For example, if the input resolution in the first convolutional block is 640 by 640, the output resolution after processing will be 320 by 320. To obtain the output channel, use the following formula. This formula is obtained from the code in the tasks.py file. First, we find the minimum value between the base output channel and max channels. The minimum value is then multiplied by the width multiple parameter. For example, we will calculate the first convolutional blocks output channel using the YOLO V10L variant with a width multiple of 1 and a max channels of 512. The base output channel in the first convolutional block is 64. So, here is the calculation. First, we find the minimum value between 64 and 512, then multiply it by 1. The result is 64. 64 is the output channel in the first convolutional block if you use the YOLO V10L. You can analyze the second convolutional block with the same way as the first one. Next is the C2F block. This block contains two parameters, shortcut and end. This value is based on the repeats parameter in the architecture file. The shortcut parameter in this block is true, indicating that the shortcut will be used on the bottleneck block, whereas n determines how many bottleneck blocks are used. The n value is calculated by multiplying the depth multiple value by 3. Next, there is another convolutional block with a kernel size of 3 and stride 2. 
The C2F block comes next, with the shortcut parameters true and M parameters equal to 6 multiplied by the depth multiple. This block's output is also connected to the neck. Next, there is SC down block. This block is used to perform down sampling operations or reduce resolution on the feature map. And then another C2F block with the shortcut parameter true and M parameter equal to 6 multiplied by the depth multiple. This block's output is also connected to the neck. Next, there is another SC down block. And then there is C2FCIB block. This block contains two parameters, shortcut and end. The shortcut parameters in this block is true, indicating that the shortcut will be used on the CIB block, whereas n determines how many CIB blocks are used. This block will be connected to SPPF. Following that, an explanation of the neck. First, SPPF. SPPF, Spatial Pyramid Pooling Fast, is used after the last convolution layer on the backbone. The main function of the SPPF is to generate a fixed feature representation of objects of various sizes in an image without resizing the image or introducing a spatial information loss. After that, there is PSA or Partial Self-Attention Block. TSA block is only placed at the lowest resolution stage. This is performed to avoid excessive computational overhead due to the quadratic complexity of self-attention. Next is the upsample layer. This layer is used to increase the feature map resolution. YOLO V10 is using the nearest neighbor upsampling method. This method works by repeating the values of nearby pixels of the image to fill in the newly generated pixels in a larger image. This layer is used to increase the feature map resolution of the PSA to match with the feature map resolution of this C2F block. The upsample feature map will be combined with the features from this C2F block using Comcat. When using Comcat, the number of channels is summed up, whereas the resolution is unchanged. For example, we will compute the concatenation of this C2F block feature map and this upsample feature map. We use the YOLO V10L variant. The output of this C2F block is 40 by 40 by 512. And the upsample output is 40 by 40 by 512. The result of concatenation is 40 by 40 by 1024. The following is C2FCIB block. The resolution of the C2FCIB block feature map will be upsampled to match the resolution of the feature map of this C2F block. Using Concat, the upsample feature map will be combined with the features from this C2F block. The following is C2F block. On the neck, C2F block does not employ a shortcut and the value of n equal to 3 multiplied by the depth multiple. The feature map of this block will be used as an input for the V10 detect block. This block is specialized for detecting small object relative to the image or video frame size. The output of this block is also used as input to this convolutional block. The convolutional block uses a kernel size of 3 and stride 2. Furthermore, concat will be used to combine the feature map from this convolutional block with the feature map from this C2FCIB block. Next, there is another C2FCIB block. The feature map of this block will be used as input for the V10 detect block. This block is specialized for detecting medium-sized objects. The output of this block is also used as input to this SC down block. Next, Concat will combine the feature map from this SC down block with the feature map from PSA block. Finally, there is another C2FCIB block. This block's feature map will be utilized as an input for the V10 detect block. This block is specialized for detecting large objects. Congratulations, you have finished learning the YOLO V10 architecture. Thank you and until next time.